terminé. Les riverains, oh, il y a parfois trop de demandes d'informations, mais je me rappelle lorsque nous avons posé la première pierre de cet aéroport, aérogare, avec le ministre président de l'époque, nous avions eu des riverains qui s'étaient précipités pour nous empêcher de mettre la première pierre. Vous imaginez aujourd'hui quel chemin parcouru. Et aujourd'hui, j'ose le dire devant vous, euh, eh bien, euh, cet aéroport constitue la fierté de notre région. Et lorsque nous devons évoquer euh, le redressement de la Wallonie, son redéploiement, eh bien, nous citons l'aéroport de Charleroi. Et lorsque, on a parfois des petits problèmes communautaires entre flamands et francophones, mais ça ne concerne jamais les aéroports, je tousse en le disant, eh bien, nos amis flamands, lorsqu'ils évoquent une des grandes réussites de la Wallonie, eh bien, c'est l'œuvre du président et bien sûr de Jean-Jacques au quotidien. C'est donc pour nous un immense bonheur, et à titre personnel, pour dix ans de travail avec toute cette équipe, et bien sûr avec la Société Wallonne des aéroports que je veux saluer, c'est pour nous un, un heureux aboutissement et un nouveau départ. Heureux aboutissement parce que nous avons multiplié les démarches pour attirer des compagnies comme les vôtres qui nous permettent de diversifier les destinations et c'est d'autant plus important et vous le savez que eh bien, nous avons ici dans la région une grande communauté turque qui sera évidemment très heureuse de pouvoir bénéficier de vos services. Et nous savons que c'est important, on parle d'un vol par jour. Bon, maintenant si on peut en faire deux, c'est mieux. Hein. Je vous le dis tout de suite, nous sommes vraiment ouverts à, à, au développement de nos liaisons avec votre beau pays. Mais je dirais aboutissement, mais aussi nouveau départ. Parce que nous restons ambitieux. C'est du reste pour cela que nous avons ouvert notre capital à un partenaire italien, savez, dans la, la, cette dynamique de renforcer le développement de cet aéroport. Et lorsque, il y a quelques années, nous avons inauguré cet aéroport, j'avais eu pour d'aucuns la bêtise de dire, et j'en termine, « Oh bien écoutez, en 2016, on devrait être autour de 6 millions de passagers. » En fait, nous l'avons fait beaucoup plus tôt. Alors aujourd'hui... Un moment un peu de, de synthèse pour moi, puisque nous allons voter dimanche et nous verrons bien quel sera le nouveau responsable des aéroports. J'ai la conviction aujourd'hui, avec euh, Laurent, avec tout le conseil d'administration, euh, avec la ville et bien sûr euh, sous la houlette de, de Jean-Jacques, euh, je que nous apprécions énormément, j'ai la conviction qu'on peut se placer dans des objectifs de 9 voire 10 millions. Et ce qui se passe malheureusement à Zaventem m'incite à penser qu'à l'avenir, cet aéroport devrait pouvoir accueillir peut-être les vols qui aujourd'hui se situent dans notre aéroport national, mais avec toutes les difficultés que ça suppose. Et j'ai envie de dire que le charter, le low cost trouve sa place ici comme le fret à Liège. C'est donc aujourd'hui un moment de, de grand bonheur que de dresser en, en quelques mots ce bilan de 10 ans de travail, mais surtout déjà de se brancher sur l'avenir, et grâce à vous, eh bien vous nous ouvrez dans tous les sens du terme de nouveaux horizons, et nous savons qu'avec votre présence, eh bien vous nous donnez un, un nouvel élan, de quoi peut-être attirer encore d'autres compagnies, mais surtout conforter l'emploi local, et vous allez participer, et je veux vous le dire, à notre fierté, nous en Wallonie, nous à Charleroi, eh bien d'avoir un si bel aéroport, c'est aussi grâce à vous. Well, unfortunately, I will talk in English. Although I do understand French, I'm not going to try to make this presentation in French because nobody will understand anything. So let me, if you don't mind, I will go out with English. First, I would like to thank Monsieur le Ministre uh, to be present in our press conference and also Jean-Jacques and Monsieur le Président for organizing this press conference. Well, I'm just going to make a short presentation to, to introduce you uh, Pegasus Airlines. Let me first start uh, with some history of Pegasus, because Pegasus was actually established back in 1990. And at that time, it was a subsidiary of Air Dublin, uh, Air Lingus from Ireland. Then it, the company changed hands a couple of times that in 2005 was bought by Essas Holding. And since then, the company has been turned into a low-cost 
network carrier. So I will explain you what this means because here are friends Ryanair, they're a low cost airline. Of, uh, actually, they are the they are uh, they are the pioneers of low cost operation, but our model is somewhat different than theirs. So what we do in Pegasus is actually let me. Uh, so we do promise uh, four things uh, to our customers. First of all, low fares, as you would expect, on-time performance, a new fleet, I'll tell about the fleet age later on, and we also offer our customers services that they will only pay if they need that service. So they can, or they can design their own travel package. So on-time performance last year, our on-time performance was over 90%. Oh, I, I okay. And, you know, the, we are the only airline in Turkey announcing our on-time performance. On our website, you can see that, what was it yesterday, or the week before, or the month before. So we are very keen on on-time performance, and last year it was over 90%. Our fleet is young. The average age of the fleet is about four years. And we have presently a fleet of 52 airplanes, and in the next two months we will have additional airplanes coming in, so we will probably end up the year with a fleet of 56 airplanes. And so coming to our model, we are a low-cost network carrier, which means that we do carry transit passengers on board. As so far, I think AirAsia is doing about the same, but Ryanair or EasyJet, the other low-cost carriers in Europe, they are not offering transit connections. And why we do this, it's very simple, because our base is Istanbul, and Istanbul is a very uh, good connection point between Europe, Middle East, Russia, and Central Asian countries. So this is why we do apply this low-cost network model, and around 27% of our international passengers are transiting in Istanbul Sabiha Gökçen Airport uh, to another domestic destination within Turkey or to another international destination. And later on, I'll show that we are not only connecting Charleroi to Istanbul, but we're also connecting Charleroi to around 40 other cities. I'll, I'll talk about low fares, on-time performance. Uh, of course, our main sales channels, uh, channel is our website, ypgs.com. We, we do have car code shares with other airlines. We have a uh, loyalty program called Pegasus Plus. And another difference between the other low-cost airlines, we do ca carry cargo in the belly. And last year, our cargo revenue was about 8 million euros. So this is the uh, this is our products that we are offering. We have we offer our seat selection to our customers. We we did this since the very beginning, and I know that Ryanair and EasyJet they are now trying to move move to move into seat selection. We have Pegasus Plus credit card. With, this is a joint venture with ING Bank in Turkey. Of course, we do it for <coughs> car rentals, hotel bookings through our website. So this is uh, the domestic network, how it looks. You know, Turkey is a huge country. I mean, here in Belgium, you can travel everywhere with a car, and you don't even notice when you go into France. But in Turkey, this, Turkey's geography is very big, um, the, uh, and it's a big population as well, over 70 close to 76 million. And we do fly to 30 domestic destinations within Turkey. And the uh, last year, the Turkish domestic passenger number was about 36 million. But this number, although it sounds huge, is still a small number for Turkey because the uh, per capita travel 
domestic travel is only 0 0.5 in Turkey. And when, when you compare this to Spain, which is well, which has a similar geography, which is also a touristic country, in Spain this number is close to one. So I think in the next uh, five to ten years we will see that the number of domestic passenger flying in Turkey will be over 70 million. So this is our international network. As you can see, we almost cover all big European cities. Uh, we fly to 34 countries, eight, 83 cities in 34 countries. It's a huge domestic network. And we are also be flying to some Russian destinations. We are also flying to some Central Asian destinations like Almaty and Bishkek. We are also trying to expand the network to our Middle East, but on these geographies we are somehow limited uh, by the bilateral agreements because these geographies, I mean, they have the old sickness of trying to protect the national airline, whatever it is, I don't know, but they are still trying to do this. And when you look at our growth numbers, when we started in 2005, when it started starting domestic flights, in, domestic scheduled flights in 2005, we had only a fleet of 14 airplanes. As I said today, the fleet is 52. The, uh, the recently ordered 100 A320 or A321 NEOs, the deal was signed uh, beginning of 2013, and the airplanes are going to be delivered starting 2016. So, and you know the NEOs are very efficient airplanes, or a at least Airbus is saying so. That is, they are going to be very efficient, and they will be around 15% less. They will burn 15% less, less fuel. Last year we carried 16.8 million passengers. I mean, and so the destination number went up to 83. And the last two years, Pegasus Airline was named as the fastest growing airline in Europe by the official airline guide. So our domestic traffic since we started in 2005 it grew around 36% in cargo every year. And as of today, we are flying. We are, our market share in domestic travel in Turkey is about 28%. So there are five other players in the market. And Pegasus is by far the second carrier in Turkey after Turkish Airlines. On international traffic, our Turkey <coughs> traffic grew by 13%. These are big numbers. But our traffic grew by 24%. And as of today, we have about 11% market <coughs> share on international traffic to Turkey. This is including all the traffic, charter flights, long haul flights, everything. Included. So I talked about our market shares, which the uh, first three months of 2014, it went up to 27.3%. And this, we will probably end up this year with 20, over 28% market share. And our international market share went up to 11.6%. So we do fly to Brussels actually since 2009. But this year, we decided to change uh, the airport. Because the reason being, Charleroi is, uh, they know, they understand the low cost business. So the airport, the ground time and the taxi time in the airport are very convenient. And of course, they offer good rates. Thanks, Jean-Jacques, for this. And with True Charlois, we are able to offer our customers better rates instead of flying to Zaventa. The flight started in 30th of March. And since then, I checked the on-time performance and the uh, the on-time performance are very good, over 95%. 
or actually it's, in April it was 96%, and first 15 days of May, my on-time performance was 100%. This is very good. And the flights leave Istanbul around 13.55 local time. Oh, the Brussels in 13.55 local time, arriving in Istanbul 18.13. So, uh, about the, our main base, Istanbul Sabiha Gökçen Airport. I don't know if you're familiar with the geography in Istanbul, because Istanbul is actually two cities divided by the Bosphorus. And Sabiha Gökçen Airport is on the Asian side of Istanbul. And you know the other airport, Atatürk Airport, is on the European side. <coughs> and this airport was actually started to grow with us. And when we started in 2005, there was no other <coughs> carriers in this airport. And now it's one of the fastest growing airports in, within Europe. And the government is now planning to build a second fully parallel runway because the airport now is getting congested. And this runway is going to be, become operational in 2016, which will double the runway capacity because it will be a fully parallel runway being two airplanes can will be able to land or take off at the same time. And you know that Istanbul Atatürk Airport, the other airport, is fully loaded. It's, there are no more slots available than Atatürk Airport. And the government is now planning to build a third airport on the Black Sea side. So this these are the cities we are connecting Brussels via Istanbul Sabiha Gökçen Airport. As you can see, we, we connect them. Okay. We offer connections to Doha, Bahrain, Dubai, Kuwait, Bishkek, Almaty, and Omsk, somewhere in Russia. Right. So, this is the end of it. Uh, what we are saying all this is we did not, of course, start the aviation in Turkey, but we transferred the aviation in Turkey. And our competitors in Turkey, they are now following us. And thank you for listening. Cher Sertas, Monsieur le Ministre, Président, Madame la représentante de l'ambassade de Turquie, Monsieur les Juins du Tourisme et de l'Internationalisation, chers amis journalistes et chers collègues, tout d'abord, c'est une grande fierté d'accueillir Pegasus, on l'a accueilli le 30 mars, mais aussi de voir The Spirit